This is the house that Kate built, filled with must-have accessories that are all the rage, with everyone from soccer moms to supermodels. And it all started in 1993 um, in New York City, out of my apartment. But with Kate's vision and a single simple idea, the business didn't stay home-based for long. There was a lack of interesting accessories that had a personality but still were very elegant and functional. And I loved the idea of using really beautiful fabrics. And I didn't see a lot of that, so. The Kate Spade bag was born. Six shapes of bright linens with a very simple little flower trim. And we had a few orders, <laughs> not a lot. But the few who ordered attracted a lot of attention. First, Winona wanted one. Then Meg decided they were a must have. And Gwyneth jumped on the bandwagon too with her boxy little bag. Suddenly, Kate's creations were everywhere, and so was that little label. I remember thinking, there's something missing. I, I want something for my eye to go to. And so the label that was meant to go on the inside, I took it out of the box and I sewed it on the outside, and that was it. For Kate, innovation and creativity are key, tricks of the trade learned in her days as an assistant at Mademoiselle magazine. I was in, you know, Mexico, and I just remember, you know, one of the makeup artists had to have a Snickers bar, and I was, get me a Snickers, and I was out driving around in Mexico, not knowing where, where I was, <laughs> looking for Snickers bars. <laughs> that prepared me a lot for what I'm doing now, absolutely. Because it just is only, and what it really taught me also was no stone unturned. A philosophy she's building an empire on, but success hasn't spoiled Kate. The girl who grew up in Kansas and went on to change the shape of fashion still gets a charge out of seeing her collection outside of the showroom. I always made this to my husband. Oh my God, oh my God, look, she's wearing Kate's face. And now I think he's getting a little tired of it. He's like, okay. <laughs>